ब्रह्मांड पुराण पार्ट फोर ललिता महात्म्य चैप्टर ट्वेल्व मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ ललिता हाय ग्रीवा सेड सिंस ही भंडा वाज बोर्न ऑफ द फायर ऑफ एंगर ऑफ रुद्र द माइटी भंडा बिकेम अ दानवा ऑफ ड्रेडफुल नेचर देन शुक्र द एक्सट्रीमली refulgent uh, preceptor of the daityas came to him hundreds of very powerful daityas too came to him urged by the son of bhrigo that is shukra bhanda called maya the original architect and engineer and artisan of the race of daityas and spoke these meaningful words it was at shonitapura that all leading daityas stayed before and ruled the three worlds go there and rebuild the city um the footnote says although assamese claim tejpur as ancient shonitapura the claim of shonitapura on the bank of kedar ganga or mandakini about 6 miles from uh, usha mat in kumayun appears more acceptable on hearing those words the architect went to that great city and by means of his imaginative mind and power of vision rebuilt the city to make it resemble the city of the devas he uh, bhanda was crowned by shukra and the mighty daityas due to that great glory he shone with great refulgence bhanda wore on his head the crown that shone like the rising sun and that was placed on his head by the son of bhrigo formerly it had been given to hiranyakashipu by brahma it was lively and indestructible it had been worn by many daityas daitya rulers two lively chamaras that is chauris were used by him as his insignia they resembled the moon they had been made by brahma neither sickness nor miseries could assail one by resorting to them he Sh- shukra presented him an umbrella formerly made by brahma himself people seated in its shade were never affected by even crores of missiles the perceptor gave him a bow named vijaya and a conch called the killer of enemies he gave him other very valuable ornaments too he presented him an everlasting throne dazzling like the sun seated on the throne and bedecked in all ornaments he became magnificently brilliant like a gem that had been wetted he had 80 mighty daityas as his assistants viz indra shatru amritragna amitragna vidyanmali bibhishana ugra karma ugra dhanva vijaya and shruti paraga he had four beautiful wives viz sumohini kumudini chitrangi and sundari all the devas including vasava indra who understood the exigencies of the time served him he had thousands of chariots horses elephants and foot soldiers noble one with huge bodies they were very proud of their victory 
all the Dhanavas followed the directives of the son of Bhrigu, that is Shukra. They worshipped God Mahadeva, abiding by the injunctions cult of Shiva. The Dhanavas possessed sons, grandsons and ample wealth. Yajnas were being performed all round in every household. Rik Yajus and Saman Mantras were frequently chanted in all the houses of Daityas. Mimamsa, Mimamsa, Nyaya and other systems of philosophy too were studied in every house. The Devas accepted Havya offering in the Yajnas of the Daityas too, as in the case of important hermitages of sages and brahmanas. Even as Bhanda carried on all these activities with great pride in his victory, 60,000 years elapsed like half of a moment. On seeing the Daitya increasing in power of penance and physical strength and Indra deteriorating in prowess, the consort of Kamala, that is Vishnu, all on a sudden created a Maya that enchanted the worlds. Janardana, the lord of the Devas, told that Maya, fascinating and deluding all living beings by your own power, do roam about as you please. No one will find you out. Go hence immediately and enchant Bhanda, the leader of Daityas, ere long he will enjoy all worldly pleasures. After receiving this boon, Maya bowed to Janardana and requested for a few of the chief celestial damsels for assistance. On being requested by her, the Lord sent some celestial damsels. Accompanied by those ladies, chief of whom was Bishwachi, that fawn-eyed lady, that is Maya, went to the excellent shore of Manasa Lake, where brilliant trees grew up. Um, the footnote says, the Purana writer had little idea that there are no trees near Manasa Lake. It is a poetic vision of the lake. Um, it was there that the leader of the Daityas was sporting about in the company of his woman. There at the root of the Champaka tree, the fawn-eyed woman took up her residence and began to sing in sweet notes. Then the leader of the Daityas came there, surrounded by his mighty ministers. He heard the, the note of the lute and saw the excellent lady. On seeing that lady beautiful in every limb like another streak of lighting, another streak of lightning, he fell into the deep abysm named Cupid of an illusory nature. His ministers too became deeply affected by Kama, Lord of Love, in their hearts. On being requested continuously by the leader of Daityas and those ministers also, the Maya lady, as well as her assistant damsels instantly promised them adequate pleasure. On attaining those ladies, the chief of whom was Mohini, they derived the greatest pleasure because ordinarily they could not be obtained even by Aswamedha and other great yajnas. They forgot the Vedas and Lord Umapati Shiva too. They forsook yajnas and other auspicious rites. Their priest too was struck down by contemptuous disregard. Thus ten thousand years passed by as though it were a mere muhurta, forty-eight minutes. When the Daityas were thus deluded, O Brahmana, the Devas, including Vasava, became liberated from torment. 
they derived great pleasure. One sage Narada came there and saw Devendra seated in his throne and surrounded by all devas. After bowing down to that noble sage shining brilliantly like fire, the lord of devas stood up in reverence with palms joined together and spoke these words. O holy lord, conversant with all sacred rites, the most excellent one among those who know the para and apara, the greatest thing and the lesser one. You visit only such places as you wish to bless. The cause of your arrival is the future of the splendid fortune in store for us. Listening to your nectar-like words very pleasant to the ears, O Lord of Sages, I shall cross all miseries and become blessed. Narada said, Bhanda, the leader of the Daityas, has become enchanted by Vishnu's Maya. If liberated from her, he is likely to burn all the three worlds like another fire. He is superior to you in regard to refulgence and power of magical delusion. It is necessary that the refulgence of this super strong daitya should be removed without propitiating goddess Parashakti, O Vasava. It is impossible to achieve it by means of other types of austerities, even in hundreds of crores of kalpas. Prior to the rise of the enemy, O ignorant one, propitiate the deity. On being propitiated, the goddess will bring about your welfare. On being urged and enlightened thus by him, Shakra, the lord of the groups of devas, duly honored the sage. Accompanied by all the devas, he made due preparations for penance and went to the slope of the Himavan. Along with all the gods, he performed the great worship of Parashakti on the bank of Bhagirathi that was brilliant with flowers in every one of the seasons. Even since then, that place bestowing all sorts of accomplishments came to be known by the name Indraprastha. The footnote says this is not the site of old Delhi. The location of this Indraprastha is untraced. In accordance with the procedure advised by the son of Brahma, they performed the excellent and great worship of the goddess. They were engaged in japa, repetition of the holy names and mantras and meditation. They were steadfast in the severe penance without turning their mind or attention to anything else. Thus 10,000 years and 10 days passed by. On seeing the suras deluded, the highly intelligent priest, the son of Vrigu, approached Bhandasura and spoke thus. It is relying on you alone, O leading king, that the excellent Dhanavas always sport and roam about as they please in three worlds without any fear. Hari always kills everyone belonging to your tribe. It was by him that this Maya was created, whereby you too have been, delu have been deluded. On seeing you enchanted and fascinated Indra, who is also eager to seek loopholes and vulnerable points, is performing a great penance to defeat you all. If the mother of the universe is pleased, the victory shall be his alone. Abandon this lady created by Maya. Go to the Himalaya mountain accompanied by your ministers and create hindrances in the penance of your enemies. On being told thus by his preceptor, the demon Bhanda left his excellent couch. Inviting the elderly ministers, he told them everything as it had happened. On hearing it and after critically examining it, Shrudavarma said to the king, Kingdom was granted to you by Shiva for a period of 60,000 
years more period than that o heroic one has passed by it is impossible to redeem the period granted by shiva it is impossible to find another remedy for this without worshiping him or shiva whether it is misery or happiness the result has to be experienced at the proper time then the demon named bhimakarma said the enemy should not be neglected if obstacles are put in the holy rites of the enemy by us in accordance with our power the victory will be yours the vidya magical art that takes away half the strength of the enemy in the battle has been granted to you o great king by shiva himself hence the victory will be your own forever bhanda the leader of the danavas agreed to his suggestion starting along with the armies he went to the valley of the himavan on seeing danavas eager to create obstacles in the penance of god the mother of the universe made a huge lustrous rampart wall in front of them that could not be crossed on seeing it the leading danava was surprised and thought thus what is this the infuriated danava then shattered it with a very powerful missile again it appeared in front of him one that could not be crossed by any of the danavas the bold demon then shattered it by means of the bayavya having the wind as the presiding deity missile and then roared again and again it was reduced to ashes and again and again it rose up the leader of the daityas became despondent on seeing this and went back to his city on seeing the mother of the universe and noticing the lustrous rampart the devas trembled with fear abandoning all their holy rites thereupon chakra said to them it was the leader of the daityas who had come here it is impossible to defeat him even if all of us join together even if we flee there is no place of refuge for us anywhere hence we shall make a sacrificial pit one yojana in breadth let it be splendid and dug perfectly well we shall prepare the sacrificial fire in accordance with the injunction of a mahayaga mahayaga o suras we shall then worship the greatest shakti by means of mahamamsa great flesh that is human flesh we shall become brahman or we will be able to enjoy heaven on being told thus the devas with indra as their leader duly performed homa by chopping off the flesh to the chanting of mantras when all the flesh of the victim had been dropped into the holy fire including feet and hands and when devas were desirous of offering the entire body an excellent huge mass of brilliant luster appeared in front of them from its middle rose up a radiant circular halo of the shape of a wheel the devas including basava saw mahadevi in its middle she had the luster of the rising sun she was the enlivener of the entire universe she was the embodiment of brahma vishnu and shiva she was the very limit of the essence of beauty she appeared to be the ocean of the juice of bliss she resembled the japa china rose flower she wore robes of the color of flowers of pomegranate she was adorned by all kinds of ornaments she was the very abode of the soul sentiment of love with the waves of gracious mercy wafting along the tips her glance was as cool as the moonlight in her hands the nose in her hands the nose god sugarcane bow 
with five arrows were shining. On seeing the great goddess, all devas, including Vasava, Indra, became delighted in their minds and they bowed down again and again to the goddess. The immanent soul of everything on being glanced at by her all of them instantly became liberated from ailments their limbs became tougher and stronger with the deficiencies remedied they became mighty with adamantine bodies they eulogized the great goddess Ambika, the bestower of all objects.